Don't you think? I'm this morning. It was nice and cool. This afternoon, it was a little bit warm. Uh, we want to make our friends from Nicaragua to feel welcome, right? So, uh, Well, it's good to be with you today. I've been recently in Seattle. We've been uh, training mission workers, working with the thousands of refugees from Somalia, Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, um, Colombia, Congo, different places. And uh, this, this is our mission on our doorstep. Uh, these who are coming to our country and hearing for the first time, many times, hear these, uh, and it's conducted in churches, and many times Muslim families never been inside a church. And they're bringing their children. We're doing a children's trauma program and working with these families who've all come from war-torn countries. And it is exciting to see the message of Jesus Christ being understood and heard for the first time. What a privilege that I've had, not only in San Diego, but also then on up in Seattle, and train these workers, and uh, what a blessing. So anyway, well, we're, we're ending this uh, series on uh, being a neighbor, about being a, how to neighbor. Uh, I think probably to, uh, uh, we have to turn to God's word to understand or define what is a neighbor. And so we're going to turn to uh, Luke chapter 10. It's a very familiar passage. In fact, I preached on this passage on a different perspective uh, many months ago, but uh, Luke 10 addresses this uh, uh, issue of how to be a neighbor. Um, and then uh, let's read this uh, from 25 to 37 of Luke chapter 10. And behold, a certain lawyer, now don't get your hackles up because it's a lawyer. Uh, he was simply someone who understood the Torah, the book of the law. And he was coming to test Jesus about the law. He's trying to trip him up. Okay. So a certain lawyer stood on up and tested him saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? This is what Jesus said. So the man answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Now there he's quoting from Deuteronomy and Leviticus two very important passages for every Jewish person. Uh, mezuzahs, uh, are you familiar with uh, entering a Jewish household? You ever notice on the right above the door at an angle is a little little uh, small piece of wood or metal. Uh, it's called a mezuzah. And inside is the Shema. And this is the Shema. So every time a Jewish person enters a home, they always touch the mezuzah because they are affirming this very passage. So that's why this man knows very familiar the Shema. And so Jesus said to him, you've answered rightly. Do this and you'll live. But he wanting to justify himself said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Wow. That's pretty amazing. They would the audacity there. Anyway, so Jesus answered him and said, "He gives this this illustration. It's very familiar uh, to anybody who's living there. They understand this this story. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Now, going from Jerusalem to Jericho is all downhill. Uh, it's uh, uh, Jerusalem is like thirty six hundred uh, feet above sea level." And uh, Jericho is like a thousand feet below sea level. It's just all downhill. And so when the scripture says he went down to Jericho, he went down. Okay. All right. Went down to Jericho and fell among Thebes, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a certain priest came down the road, and when he saw him, 
He passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived, the place came, he looked, and he passed by on the other side. Then a certain Samaritan. Now, imagine this is a neighbor of Israel, <laughs> of Judea. Uh, they were in the northern section, right above Jerusalem. Samaria. Uh, they hated these neighbors. All right, so this Samaritan. He came, and where he was, he saw him, and he had compassion. So he went up to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his animal, his donkey, and brought him to an inn and took care of him. On the next day when he departed, he took out two denarii. Two denarii is like, uh, like two days wages, a lot of money. And he gave them to the innkeeper, <clears throat> and he said to him, take care of him, and whatever more you spend when I come again, I will repay you. So he's going to come back up from Jericho back to Jerusalem. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he answered, he who showed compassion, mercy, then Jesus said, go and do likewise. I like the, the Nike thing, you know, just do it. That's what Jesus said, just do it. Well, here, we're looking at this issue of how to be a neighbor. I think often we think of, um, how we read this story, we're thinking of Jesus talking about the down and outers, the people who maybe you're up at... Uh, Walmart, and there's somebody asking for funds or whatever. But I think we're going to see in this passage that Jesus is dealing with something far bigger than that. I remember uh, our daughter was about three years old, and she was watching Mr. Rogers. Remember Mr. Rogers? By the way, did you know that he was a pastor? Yeah, he was a Presbyterian pastor. And his mission was to bring these Christian values in this story that he had. And so remember, won't you be my neighbor? Remember that? And my little three-year-old daughter looked up and she said, he's not my neighbor. I don't even know him. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so how do we know our neighbor? How do we know our neighbor? And here, Jesus is confronting uh, this person who really is speaking the law. He knows the law. I mean, every day he's touching the Shema and affirming the same thing he told Jesus. But Jesus said, you're not living it. <laughs> it's not happening. And he confronts him with this. In fact, what's really difficult is these neighbors to the north <coughs> that the Jews hate is the very neighbor There was a neighbor of this man in need. And so this is really quite a slap. I mean, this is really quite a... But really, it's, it's, it, it really confronts us. Because often, uh, we, we don't really live according to God's word in terms of being a neighbor. Uh, we, we, uh, maybe we give some money to somebody in need, but uh, being a neighbor is bigger than that. Uh, in... Um, in Numbers uh, 19, it talks about, in the, the many other places, it talks in the Old Testament, talks about being a neighbor to those who are strangers or aliens. By the way, there are many uh, Jewish rabbis in the Knesset, the, the governing body in Jerusalem, uh, that uh, believe that Israel is making a huge mistake. The way they're treating the Palestinians, while they are aliens or Maybe they're strangers or not part of the Jewish faith, but it's how you treat them. And so Jesus is backing us up here and making us stop and take stock of our lives about how we see other people. I think what happened 
was not that they, they were using an excuse, this priest or Levite, because they could have used the excuse because uh, in the Old Testament it says if you touch a dead person, you can't worship for seven days. But I, the, the guy wasn't dead. And I think what it was, trying to be generous, I think they were just busy. I think they were probably on a very important mission that day. Maybe they were going to help some rescue mission. <laughs> they were going to, they're, they're, they're busy involved. Uh, but what happened was, <coughs> they missed it. By the way, priests were really the uh, public health officials. The Levites were really responsible for distributing alms to the poor. So they were already in the business of compassion, of caring, responding to needs. But they missed it. And I think uh, maybe we could use the example of uh, maybe if you're in a dark alley and you, you know, you, you didn't know if uh, somebody else is there lurking and you're trying to help somebody, they would jump you, whatever. So you're cautious. But of all things, this neighbor to the north, this man from Samaria, he's facing the same problems. I mean, on the road from uh, Jerusalem to Jericho, as you... By the way, there's a nice, nice uh, uh, freeway, that, highway that goes all the way down to the Dead Sea. Been there? You know, it's a really nice. But that's not the road they were on. Uh, and I've been on that section of it. And it's full of crags and caves where robbers could hide. It's a really dang. In fact, they referred to the road from Jerusalem to Jericho as the bloody way. Because it was, was, was a difficult, frightening place to be to try to make that journey. And so Jesus is using this example to say this person that you would least expect to be a neighbor was a neighbor. And Jesus said, Who, who's the neighbor? Well, the man had to say, the one who showed compassion, the one who did it. And so what Jesus is saying, just do it. Now, it's, it's often our being a neighbor. And what a, I think the bigger issue is, it's not just the person who's destitute. It's just that we have eyes to see others. That, that the, the, when you become a follower of Jesus Christ, God changes your heart. Uh, because quite naturally, you're so full of ourselves. By the way, one of the most difficult things that I consider that's happening in our American culture is we are so self-centered. We are so self-absorbed. I mean, I was talking to Katie and Kevin, asking them about what's happening in the schools, <coughs> and to hear the disrespect, the anti-authority. I mean, we're going downhill fast, folks. And, and, and here, what Jesus is saying is, can't you even look upon human beings with a sense of their nobility and value? He says, stop. He said, you're trying to, you're trying to uh, talk about the law. He said, do you understand the heart of God is that you would look upon other human beings with compassion and understanding. That he, says, he says, take stock of your view of how you live your life. And so he's saying, this ministry of mercy, it means you have to be present. I think what happens as God works in our lives and as we grow uh, in Christ, as, as Jesus becomes more real to us. And worship like this is one part of it, but being part of a small group and <coughs> learning how to share your faith, all those things. But I think what happens is that God en enlarges our view. We begin to see others. It begins, to, begins to be important that we have a heart of compassion. And so Jesus tries to address this issue. And he says, I want you to understand that this is not optional. <laughs> not optional. This is what it means to be a Christian. I think the reason why a lot of people 
never really listen to what we say about Jesus is because they're looking at our lives. They're looking and seeing how we treat people. You know, and when you're in Walmart, uh, when you're a Target, whatever, it's the way you treat that person. You know, I, I've worked a lot with homeless people and whatever, and one thing they tell me is people never look at us. We're invisible. I, I think it's kind of like not just the person who's homeless or or, or, or asking for help. People are just kind of invisible. Uh, and so Jesus is trying to address this issue and he's saying that there needs to be a change of our perspective. Uh, we, we, we were called <coughs> oh, sorry, to live this Christian life in such a way that other people can see it. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not optional. Um, and so what I would suge suggest is that you begin to pray. And how, let me tell you today what I would suggest how to pray. Uh, how, do, how do you be a neighbor? How do you really be a neighbor? First of all, pray that God will open your eyes to those around you. Pray, pray that God will open your eyes to those around you. And it can be your colleague at work. Maybe it's your own family. Uh, maybe it's a neighbor. Maybe, you know, God would open your eyes to really hear and see and have an understanding. There's, there, you know, you're there. It's that ministry of presence. You have to be there. And then, secondly, there's that ministry of practice that there's something you, you need to do. And so I'd say, first of all, pray that God would open your eyes. The second thing I would ask you to pray for is that God would give you a desire, a desire to be a neighbor. Really be a neighbor. And then I would say, pray that God would give you a, the ability to be a neighbor. Because really, we don't have the ability. I mean, really, life is full. You're trying to make a living. You're trying to get the kids to school. You're trying to, you know, life is it's really busy. There's, a, there's so much crowding into our lives. And so I think God has to give us the ability to stop and, and, and hear and see. And then finally, I would say that pray that God would give you opportunity. God would give you that kind of that prompting of the Holy Spirit to remind you this is the time to say something. Maybe it's to talk about Jesus and your relationship with Jesus. Maybe it's just the opportunity to listen to somebody. Maybe, maybe they're, they're, they're listening, yearning for someone who cares. Uh, and then, uh, let's be honest, it's costly. It really is costly because it's inconvenient. It's never at the right time. Uh, and also, uh, it's just hard to do. And then also I would suggest that you pray for a heart of compassion that uh, God will give you this kind of, kind of heart. And how, how, do you, how do you know if that's there? I think uh, God will give you a cheerful heart. You know, God loves a cheerful giver. I mean, I think a person who's a giver is, is cheerful. You know, you're not giving so you get back. But you're just simply giving. You know, that's, that's what makes Christianity so unique. It isn't a works kind of thing, a guilt kind of thing. It's a love kind of thing. It's, a, it's a, the kind of thing that just makes you, you want to give it to somebody else. You know, it's so good. You're so much joy. And so God would pray that God would give you a, a heart of compassion. You know, not only for those who are struggling and needy, but just for other human beings. And then the, third, uh, the last thing I would say is pray for courage. Courage. Because I think the, the biggest problem is fear. Now, often uh, we don't say anything about our faith because we're afraid we're going to offend somebody or say something wrong or we don't know how to say it. We want somebody uh, else to do it and whatever. 
or we don't know, uh, just, Jesus said, just do it. Isn't that simple? I mean, just show up. Just be there. And I think, I think that is the most real, with integrity, uh, and, and, and honest kind of relationship to have. That kind of relationship where you're asking for the Holy Spirit to guide you and lead you in your relationships and just live it out. I mean, just love of somebody, you know? I mean, really giving yourself. I mean, unless the Holy Spirit prompts us and leads us, we're not going to see the need. We're not going to see the need before us unless God gives us eyes to see and ears to hear. And so pray that God will give you that kind of heart that on this dangerous road, God will help you to stop. You'll listen to the Holy Spirit and you'll just do it. This week, let me ask you, this week, would you ask for God to give you opportunity? Just give you opportunity. Give you, give you, understand, uh, opportunity to be a neighbor in a way that you've never been before and to reach out. And next week, <coughs> come back and share with somebody else what happened. I think when we just be a neighbor, not a job, it's a calling as a follower of Jesus Christ. Just do it. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, help us. Help us to be a neighbor. Uh, we're, 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 we're filled with ourselves. <coughs> we, we, we often we don't even see the needs before us. We need you to help you to uh, make us aware. We, we ask for you to give us the ability. We ask that you would give us a heart of compassion. We pray for that kind of joy. We pray that you would uh, uh, give us opportunity. And so we ask for this transformational work that only you can do because it's not there within ourselves. And it's not, I mean, we're so influenced also by our culture. I mean, it's not there. So unless you do that, we won't know how to be a neighbor. So we ask for that in Jesus' name. Amen.